an Essene is one who studies the Essene wisdom in order to understand the lifestyle practices taught by our gurus. We attempt to study and understand their teachings so that we can live them in our daily life. Because again, we don't believe that you go to heaven by simply saying that you accept Jesus as your savior. Rather, you experience the state of consciousness that corresponds with your thoughts, words, and deeds. Welcome, wonderful viewers, to the finale of our program on the modern-day Essene Church of Christ in Eugene, Oregon. We have just heard from Reverend Brother Day Nazariah, High Priest and Initiating Guru of the Essene Church of Christ and the Order of the Blue Rose. Over the past two weeks on our noble lineage, we have learned how Brother Day was divinely destined to meet his Essene spiritual teacher, Malachi, who entrusted him to carry on the precious lineage, and how vegetarianism, one of the ancient rooted precepts of the Essene faith, can help uplift humanity and save the planet. Yeshua, that's Jesus, thought that the main reason for being vegetarian wasn't even health, it was for the spiritual juice that you get from just starting to love other beings. Join us now as we explore some of the well-preserved practices and beliefs of the Essenes. We believe that the Essene Church has often been forced to exist underground, invisible to the public on this planet, due to violent persecution. We believe that our modern Essene Church of Christ is the current above-ground, visible manifestation of the ancient Essene Church. In every age of the planet Earth that we are aware of, there has always been both exoteric religion and esoteric religion. Eso means inner. Teric means circle in Latin. So exoteric is outer circle religion. Esoteric is inner circle religion. So we represent inner circle Christianity, and this would be true that the other vegetarian bona fide spiritual paths like taught by your master and taught by Buddha and Krishna and beings such as this, that's esoteric religion. That's inner circle religion. The great being that came, sometimes many centuries after their death, right. their esoteric religion has become surrounded by exoteric religion. Right. You know, but, but within each of those religions, you can still always find the mystics, the, the higher level consciousness. And so the same tradition has preserved from the ancient principles until today. Absolutely. And, you know, this isn't by accident. It's that the great beings that were the original Essenes, the original Essene Christianity, they set up what is called, and you will find this in all of the world religions, whether they use this term or not, the ancient Essenes set up a mystery school. A mystery school is esoteric religion in this way, and it will exist through the centuries for this reason. As initiates come to you, you have requirements to enter the initiatic circle. With the Essenes, vegetarianism, your uh, tradition right now, it's even veganism to enter an esoteric inner circle spiritual path, mm -hmm. there is an introductory level of initiation. Mm -hmm. But if it's a mystery school, mm -hmm. like the ancient Essenes, mm -hmm. there will be ongoing initiations. Mm -hmm. There will be further initiatic levels. Mm -hmm. And 
at those higher levels of initiation, we train those who will see to it that our teachings are preserved from one age to the next, that the esoteric kernel teachings will be passed down from teacher to student. As many esoteric religious groups throughout history, the Essenes have been persecuted for their beliefs, but despite all hardships, they have maintained the integrity of their ancient scriptures, teachings, and spiritual practice. They are now what is referred to as an underground religion. And that doesn't mean they live underground. So, at a certain point in history, they began to be more secretive about their living places and such as that, so that they wouldn't be completely wiped out. So my teacher, his mission, given to him by his teacher, by his master, was to go back to America and found an above ground Essene church in America, which could serve as an outlet for the teachings of the ancient Essenes. So he brought scrolls back. So this manuscript, which I have translated into English. The entire book? Yes. Wow. Uh, well, it has taken decades, mm -hmm. my life work really. I'm going to show you one of the scrolls that I have translated into English, just so you can see what it's like. If we were to keep unwinding this, it's a couple hundred feet long. Wow. This is ancient Aramaic. This is a dialect that Jesus spoke. As someone who has been privileged to read the original manuscripts, Reverend Brother Day addresses why the teachings of vegetarianism were removed from the Bible of today. Where we get scriptural support for vegetarianism, you do then have to go to the, the ancient manuscripts because what I'm going to share with you, I will admit, is controversial, mm -hmm. but it is this. Before the ancient Essene scrolls were rediscovered and translated mm -hmm. and had Jesus and Mary Magdalene teaching vegetarianism, mm -hmm. those teachings had been actually cut out of what we call the, the mainstream Bible. This is a much more ancient version of the Bible mm -hmm. and it has portions that were literally cut out by early church councils. Why? They did it because early Christianity was Essene Christianity, but then got taken over, and then they held something called, and this is very important, they held something called the Nicene Council. That happened in the year 325 A.D., the reason they wanted to cut out vegetarianism was because in those days, rich people, well, they didn't have the oil industry, they didn't have the stock exchange, they had livestock. So the rich people didn't want this movement spreading, this Essene Christianity that not only was vegetarian, but did not permit their members to participate in war. You could not be a soldier and kill if you were in the scene. Mm -hmm. So what happened then is the true followers mm -hmm. of Jesus, of Yeshua, and of Mary Magdalene went, as we say, underground and became an underground religion, persecuted. According to the Essenes tradition, Yahshua, Jesus, belonged to the Essene order of Mount Carmel in northern Palestine. This explains why the Gospel of John narrates that John the Baptist, who belonged to the Essene order at Qumran, did not recognize Yahshua when he first met and baptized him. Reverend Brother Day further reveals fascinating insight into the Essene meditation practice of light and sound, as was also taught by Lord Jesus Christ himself. One of our most important spiritual meditation practices corresponds with the tradition 
that uh, your master uh, represents so beautifully, part of that tradition is the meditation of the inner sound and the inner light, and that that is referred to in one of our Essene manuscripts called Essene Gospel of Peace, Book 4. In the Essene Gospel of Peace, Book 4, Jesus takes a group of his students who have been Essene initiates mm -hmm. for seven years. Mm -hmm. He initiated them into the, the light and the sound meditation. There were times when he gave the initiation into the inner light and sound mm -hmm. to some students who had been Essenes for less than seven years because he said this. He said, look, we say seven years because that's the average amount of time it takes most people who come out of outer circle religion mm -hmm. and lifestyle practices to get to the level that they're ready. But if any being is ready to receive the teachings after one year mm -hmm. of study or after four years of study, we give them the teaching when it's right for them as a being, mm -hmm. seven years simply being an average. Reverend Brother Day shares with us the true meaning of Essenes in Aramaic. That word Essene in the actual Aramaic, which is the dialect that Jesus spoke, the word is actually Asayim. That word means healers. An ancient writer, Philo of Alexandria, writing 2,000 years ago, he said that the Essenes were called the healers, but that they were not healers of only the physical body, but healers of body, mind, and soul. For example, that the intestinal tract. With meat eaters, the intestinal tract is only three times the body length. Leaf grass eaters, intestinal tract much longer, 10 times the length of the body, the fruit eaters. Intestinal tract 12 times the length of the body, human beings also intestinal tract 12 times the length of the body. The second leading cause of death by cancer in American men is colon cancer. And the reason you get colon cancer, usually, is because human beings having such a long intestinal tract, the meat eaters were designed by nature to be able to eliminate meat before a certain very horrible chemical reaction happened, which does happen in the human gut because we can't pass the meat through such a long length of intestinal tract before it begins to putrefy. When it begins to putrefy, it combines with a chemical that our body naturally leaches into our intestinal tract that causes cancer. We reap the consequences of what we do, and so we call that be, do, have. We can sow seeds that bring a harvest mm -hmm. of pain and misery, mm -hmm. or we can sow seeds that bring a harvest of great joy and inner peace. Okay. And, and, and this is why I can have love and respect for holy people, and any brothers and sisters that are trying to become holy people. Right. A realm, a world, is only as heavenly mm -hmm. as the thoughts, words, and deeds of the beings that reside in that world. Right. And so, you will not have a, a heavenly place mm -hmm. unless you have beings who are behaving heavenly. And this is what your teacher's spiritual path, and this is what Buddha's Eightfold Noble Path, this is what 
Patanjali of the Yoga Sutras and his limbs of yoga. This is what our Essene tradition of the Tree of Life and the Sevenfold Peace. All of these are compassionate, loving beings from the higher realms mm -hmm. who have come as an act of mercy to this world, an intermediate level world, and lovingly give spiritual discipline, spiritual practices. Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken often about the noble lineage of the Essenes. During a gathering on Christmas Day 2007 in Paris, France, Supreme Master Ching Hai shared Essene traditions with our association members. To study and to practice the teaching of the Essenes is to reawaken within uh, ourselves an intuitive knowledge that can solve our problems and the problems of the world. Wow, isn't that great? I wish everybody practiced the teaching of the essence. Yeah, we are, yeah? But not everybody else does. That's a pity, yeah? Because it's such a treasure. Mm. Traces of the teachings have appeared in almost every country and religions, yeah? Its fundamental principles were taught in ancient Persia, Egypt, India, Tibet, China, Palestine, Greeks, and many other countries. But it has been transmitted in its most pure form, form by the essence, that mysterious brotherhood which lived during the last two or three centuries before Christ. And the first century of the Christian era at the Dead Sea in Palestine and at Lake Marietis in Egypt. Nearing the end of our visit, Reverend Brother Day conveyed his sincere thanks to Supreme Master Ching Hai and wished to offer her a copy of his life's work, the translation of the Holy Megillah, the Nazarene Bible of the Essene Way. This sacred scripture is usually only available to those who officially enroll in the Essene study course as presented by Reverend Brother Day. It is noteworthy to mention that this is the first time the full Essene Holy Scripture has been available in English. To Supreme Master Ching Hai, let me say thank you. Thank you, you know, for this opportunity to share. And I understand that uh, Supreme Master Ching Hai read and studied many spiritual traditions, but including many of the ancient Essene works, mm -hmm. because this, our most important manuscript, had never been translated into English until fairly recently, mm -hmm. um, I would like to say that I would like to gift uh, the Supreme Master Ching Hai with a copy of this, if. Uh, those of you affiliated with her can find a way to give it to her. This would just be my token of appreciation for her and to the viewers. To learn more about the Essene Church of Christ and the Order of the Blue Rose, please visit www.essene.org. Reverend Brother Day can be contacted at asceneinfo at aol.com. Our sincere gratitude to Reverend Brother Day and the members of the Essene Church of Christ in Eugene, Oregon, for sharing your enlightening wisdom with our viewers. May heaven continue to bless your mission to protect the noble teachings of the Essenes and to bring peace and light to the world. And thank you, Earth-respecting viewers, for joining us on our visit to the Essene Church of Christ in Eugene, Oregon, on our noble lineage. Please stay tuned for Between Master and Disciples. May the light of truth guide you on your path. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash nl.